we will now discuss another example of computing induced maps in homology. And the maps we want to look at are self maps of the circle. So I want to show that the map from S1 to S1 given by mapping an element to its kth power induces multiplication with k. on the first homology. So we will show this just by using the axioms of homology, but there is a different way to show that using the Horevich isomorphism. So this is just a, a, a remark, would be a very quick proof. We already know from covering theory that this map induces multiplication with k on pi 1. So pi 1 of S1 with respect to uh, base point and uh, it's good to choose base, base point 1 because this is fixed by this map. And the Hurevich isomorphism is a natural isomorphism. So we have a commutative square like that. The Hurevich map is an isomorphism from the abelianization of the first uh, homotopy group, pi 1, the fundamental group, to H1. In that case, pi 1 of S1 is uh, Z. So it's abelian, and therefore we already have an isomorphism like that. And naturality of that isomorphism says that we have a commutative square. more space here. All right, so maybe it's good to have a name for this map. Let's call it FK. And here we have FK induced and the same here. So strictly speaking, this would give you this, the statement for singular homology, right? Because the Hurewitch isomorphism theorem is for singular yeah, homology. That's, that's a statement just for singular homology if we use this, but it's in but general true. You want to prove it now from yeah, the axioms. And will arbitrary. you assume the dimension axiom? Uh, no. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> let's, let's see. And the idea is to factorize this map z to z uh, to the k over a wedge of circles. All right, so we have factorization. And let's assume that k is non-negative. Oh. Okay. So I, I want to assume that, it, that K is uh, non-negative. Uh, if it is negative, then it's the same as the composition of Z to the minus K, which is then positive, followed by a reflection. And we know that the reflection, at least in singular homology, on H1, S1 is multiplication with minus 1, so we get the result for all Ks. That result I only proved, I think, for a singular homology. So 
in the proof I used the uh, dimension axiom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, the rest okay. of the argument mm -hmm. doesn't use the dimension axiom and it's true in general that it's multiplication with k, but the mm -hmm. argument I gave uh, for that uh, reflection, that was assuming the dimension axiom. So here's the factorization, here is fk. What does fk do? It wraps around s1 k times around the circle. And what you can do instead is first going to this wedge of circles where you have, let me draw it for k equals 3. Right, so what is the map? The map is, if I, is given by the following movement. If I move around here and look at the image points, then what I see is this. So I go around each circle successively like that. that this is the first map here. In particular, if you go from S1 to this wedge, and then from this wedge of circles via the projection to one of this summons to S1 again, this is just the identity on S1. The map here just maps each summoned to S1 via the identity. So if you follow this um, composition, then you follow this circle, you go around the whole thing, each of these circles is mapped to the, to, to the circle via the identity, so the end result of the composition is really that you go around the circle k times, and this is exactly the map, fk. Therefore, the induced map in homology splits, and we have to look at this composition here, or splits, I should say, factorizes. We have to analyze this map here. Mm, just seeing k notation is maybe not ideal. Maybe it should be i from 1 to k. <laughs> Never mind. So these are k copies of a circle. And we know what this is. We know that in H1, this is isomorphic to a direct sum of the summons. K summons like that. Uh, actually, now let's, let's write it like that. And the isomorphism is given by the projection. So the projection of S1 to each factor gives you a map um, down there. So the, the map here is uh, this one. Well, in the inverse of this, is given by the inclusions of the cave summit. And this I would write like this. So these are the inclusions. And these are the inverses of this isomorphism. So we can uh, complete this to a diagram like that. So what is the map that we obtain from H1S1 to this sum? I'm claiming that this map here maps x to x comma x x. So this is the diagonal inclusion of an element. Why is that? Well, just follow this, this arrow. So this, this arrow here is obtained by the 
uh, composition here to check that this um, is really this this uh, this image vector is really this uh, diagonal vector. Um, we can go over there, down there, and then project to the cave summit. But if you do that, then you see this is the map induced by the identity. Right? So if you on the space level, if you go from S1 to the swatch, and then you take the projection to one summit, this is just the identity, and therefore x is mapped to x in the ith component. Now, what is the map going from this sum to this uh, copy of h1, s1? Well, here we take arbitrary vector x1 up to xk in the sum, and I claim that this is mapped to the sum of the xi's. Okay, why is that the case? Well, we only have to check that if you have uh, some xi in one of the summons here, so basically you have to check the, the, the statement for the vector 0, 0, 0, xi, 0, 0, 0, and so on. So this is mapped to xi because, again, if you go from one of the summons via the inclusion to h1 of the wedge, and then you go further down to h1, s1, then this is a map that's induced by the identity on the space level. And therefore, xi in the ith component is mapped to xi. And since this is a homomorphism, the map from a direct sum is then just this, uh, this map here, maps x1 to xk to the sum of the xi's. If you now look at the composition of this map, and the composition again is just the induced map by fk. Oh, one can hardly see that up here. So let's put it down here. So if you look at the composition, then you go from x to the vector x, x, and so on, and then this is mapped to the sum. So x really is mapped to k times x. And this is the statement I wanted to prove. I think in the left-hand triangle you said, um, I mean, when you were reasoning why the map is this diagonal map, you said that the map is induced on the level of spaces by the identity already. Did you say that? Yes, so what you have to... I think it's not quite the identity. I think it's homotopic to the identity, right? Because if you walk along the first horizontal arrow and then down oh, this projection, right. then right. what you you're do right. is you take the, the kth segment of the circle and you span that around the full circle. And all the remaining points go to the base point. Exactly. But this is a map which is homotopic to the identity and that's enough. Thank you, thank you. So again, let me just state it clearly. If you go from here to there, then you go down and then you go down uh, to one of the factors by the projection. You have this map H1, S1 to H1, S1. So this is induced by the following map on, on spaces. Um, it is a map that maps the S1 with k-fold speed around S1 and is, uh, yeah, how, do, how shall I describe it? So I, it I, I'd say you have, you, you, you divide the sec the, the circle into k segments with equal right. angles and the kth angle is stretched over the full circle and all the points left and right from this kth um, segment are mapped to the base point, are mapped to one. Yeah, okay, so. And that is a map. Let me in write in blue to the identity. what's happening here. So here I take the projection to um, the i's. summoned. And then I look at this composition here. And the claim is that this is induced by the following map.
So we have the circle, two copies of the circle, and yeah, you, you said it correctly. Here you divide the circle into k segments. Somewhere is the i-th segment, so let's say, I don't know, let's say this is the i-th segment. Yeah, and what's happening is that, how do you describe the map? We go slowly around the circle and describe the image points. This is how we describe a map. So if I go around here, the map stays constant. So that point is mapped to that point, and I move, I go around here, but the map is constant staying on that point, till I reach that point and the green segment, the i segment, and this i segment is then wrapped around once around the circle. And when I'm here and move over there, I'm staying constant on this point. So that's the map. And this map is homotopic to the identity. It's homotopic to the identity on the circle. And therefore, on the level of homology, this blue composition is the identity, showing that this arrow here is really the map that sends x to x, uh, comma x, and so on.